So let's give you a few details about the spec of the new Kinvara 11. Oh dear, Kinvara 12. This, this is 11, this is 12. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope you all managed to have a great Easter weekend and you didn't eat too many chocolate Easter eggs. So we are back today with another full in-depth running shoe review at the channel. And the shoe we're actually looking at today is a shoe that I've really enjoyed running in over the years. And the previous version of this shoe, when we reviewed it last year, was a big surprise to us. And I actually ended up spending a lot of time in that shoe and running a lot of miles in that shoe. So let's dive into today's video and we are reviewing the all-new Saucony Kinvara 12, a very bright, lightweight, responsive, neutral training shoe. The shoe is looking great in this future black colorway and Saucony are making some wicked shoes at the moment, great designs and they're using some really bold colorways which I love and this is definitely a good looking shoe. But let's give you a few details about the spec of the new Kinvara 12. So it retails in the UK at 120 pounds. It runs off a four mil offset on the heel. So you have 28.5 mil on the heel and 24.5 mil under your four foot weight wise it weighs in at 230 grams in a men's uk 9.5 and comes in at 187 grams in a women's shoe it's currently available in two colorways for men and for women and when it comes to sizing of the shoe i would say the shoe is true to size with average width in the toe box so as i said in the intro i was a big fan of the previous version of this shoe the Convara 11 um, i hadn't run in a Convara for a long time when i tried the 11 i was quite surprised that Saucony had kind of beefed the shoe up a bit when it came to the upper they put a lot more padding in the tongue a lot more padding around the ankle and heel collar and I, I actually think it improved the overall and all-round performance of the running shoe I found it really comfortable and ran a lot of miles in this shoe but there has been a lot of changes made when it comes to the new Kinvara 12 so let's run you through some of them features that have stayed in this shoe and we'll also go through the things that have changed when it comes to this lightweight running shoe from Saucony right let's start with all the things that have stayed when it comes to the construction of the new Kinvara 12. So first thing, probably one of the most important things, it still runs off a full power run midsole and a four mil offset on the heel. Uh, the Kinvara has always been a four mil offset as far as I can remember. Also on top of that midsole, you still get that brilliant top sole of power run plus compound. So that just sits under the insole to give you that nice plush feel very close to your foot. When it comes down to the outsole of the shoe, very similar to the previous version again, and we've got this very very exposed EVA outsole. We get these small little zones of rubber. Um, this is Saucony's XT900 premium carbon rubber on the outsole to aid with traction and a bit of durability at those high wear points. If I'm honest, I've never been a fan of exposed EVA outsoles. I think you can have traction and durability issues with them. But to be fair to the Convara, this Power Run foam is pretty durable. So this is the Convara 11. I've probably done about 250 miles plus in this shoe. And you can see the wear on that foam is pretty good on the heel and the forefoot. A little bit of compression, but pretty good all in all after that sort of mileage. So even though that outsole is exposed, it seems to hold up really well to mileage. So the materials used in that midsole, outsole and topsole have stayed the same, but there has been some subtle changes to the the shape of that midsole. So we've got a bit more of a rocked shape to that midsole like a lot of the shoes on the running market nowadays and there's been a change to that heel shape as well. So if I hold the two shoes up you'll probably see the difference. We've got this slightly more pronounced heel on that midsole and we've got this slight split in that midsole as well. Um, it really reminds me of a similar shape to the Hoka Carbon X2 that we reviewed earlier in the year. The Kinvara 12 is still constructed using Saucony's form fit system. So that is a nice comfortable padded ankle collar and heel collar and then a contoured footbed to give you that nice comfortable custom like fit. When we were talking about the Kinvara 11 earlier, they'd beef the upper up, adding more padding in that tongue, quite a lot more padding as well. And then again, more padding around that ankle and heel collar. And now in the Kinvara 12, 
they've stripped it all out again. So it looks like Saucony can't make their minds up when it comes to the upper on this running shoe. So the shoe has been given a much more simplified but durable upper construction using these specifically placed thinly printed overlays to give that foot a nice level of support when moving at speed. The tongue of the shoe is still gusseted inside that upper, but that tongue has definitely been on a padding diet. It's a lot thinner than in the previous shoe. And again, a bit of padding has been taken out of that ankle collar and heel cup. A new lighter, a more breathable engineered mesh has been used for the construction of this upper. And then we've got this added structure worked and wrapped around that toe box of the shoe just for a bit of added durability. So with that lighter mesh fabric being used, a thinner tongue in the shoe, less padding around the ankle collar and heel cup, and just a more simplified design in general of this upper. Comes as no surprise, there's been a big effect on the weight of this shoe. So I think a lot of you guys that enjoy running in the earlier, lighter models of the Convara are gonna be very happy about this because the Convara 12 is now 20 grams lighter than the already quite light Convara 11. So there you have it, the new Convara 12. And that's a bit of information about some of the changes that have been made and about the features in this shoe. We put a good 30 miles plus into this shoe. So let's run you through the things that we've really enjoyed about this lightweight neutral training shoe. But we'll also highlight a few of the areas where we feel there could be subtle improvements made. But let's start with the good stuff first. The first thing I really enjoyed was actually one of the things I was worried about. Uh, and that was the fact that they'd stripped a lot of padding away from the heel collar and out of that tongue. And a lot of padding out of that tongue. And I actually really liked the level of padding they had added to the Convara 11. It was one of the highlights of the shoe for me. The tongue felt very comfortable and I got great lockdown in the Convara 11s. I, I shouldn't have worried. This shoe still feels great straight out of the box. No issues at all. That gusseted tongue in the shoe, you still feel really dialed in and connected to the shoe. And the fact that Saucony have worked that little bit of cushioning down the center of the tongue works really well. So it's comfortable across the top of the foot. Uh, again, I was worried about that lack of padding in the tongue, but it works really well in this shoe. I've actually liked all the changes and the way they've simplified this upper. The toe box feels a little bit roomier, if anything. It feels a lot airier, very soft internally. Um, I think the previous shoe ran quite warm. There was several layers of mesh on the Convara 11 and it could get quite hot in the toe box of the shoe. So definitely more breathable. And the fact that all them changes have, have taken a bit of weight off the shoe, 20 grams of weight off a shoe that was already quite light, I love a light running shoe, so that can only be a positive thing. As far as that midsole top sole combination, I really enjoyed it in the previous Convara 11 and I've really got on with it in the Convara 12s as well. I think that combination of that full power run midsole with that power run plus top sole gives you that real good blend between comfort and cushioning, but you still feel connected. You still got that ground feel, so the shoe feels very responsive when you up the tempo. So them two things put together, I think make for a very versatile midsole in a running shoe. As far as things that we haven't quite gotten on with when it comes to the new Convara 12, well, there really isn't many to talk about, to be fair. The only thing I can think of is when it comes to midfoot lockdown. Don't get me wrong, it's been comfortable, I feel locked in, it's not an issue at all, but I do feel lockdown for me and my foot shape was a little bit better when it came to the Convara 11. Uh, I don't know whether it's the shape of the shoe or the fact that the Convara 11 had a, a deeper plusher tongue uh, and that took some volume out of the midfoot of the shoe. I haven't got the deepest of foot so it might just be that that thicker tongue just gave me a bit of more specific fit and, and dialed in lockdown around the midfoot. Like I said still good in this shoe so it's the only real thing I could think of when it comes to things I'd want to change. Everything else I've really gotten on with this shoe. So it's been another really good running experience in a Saucony running shoe, but we've reached that time of the review where we've got to get some points on the board. So let's dive into scoring the Convara 12s and let's start with the price first. With the shoe retail in the UK at 120 pounds, I think that's a pretty fair price for such a versatile running shoe. A running shoe that will do your long runs, recovery runs, speed work, tempo work, and it will double up as a race day shoe if you wanted to use it for that. Obviously with running shoe prices rocking into the stratosphere and the whole world going mad, I think £120 is pretty reasonable. It has gone up £5 since the previous version, 
which I'm never a big fan of, but I understand economics and everything else. So because of that, it probably would have scored higher if it had stayed at 115, but we're gonna score the Convara 12 for price a seven out of 10. Next up is comfort and performance. And even with a lot of the changes that were made to the Convara 11 that I really enjoyed being taken out, this has still been a really good running experience. Straight from the first run, really comfortable shoe to run in. My longest effort in the shoe is just under half marathon distance and very comfortable place. Definitely a more breathable, airy upper construction. No rubbing, no hot spots, no blisters to speak of, nothing like that. With that midsole, top sole combination, not really going through any significant changes from the previous version. Still offers that great balance and blend between comfort and cushioning and responsiveness and performance. Obviously, with that simplistic design in that upper construction, losing 20 grams can only be a good thing and it definitely felt lighter to run in. So all in all, very happy to see that Saucony haven't spoiled a running shoe that I really enjoyed running in. So the Convara 12 is gonna come in with a real versatile eight out of 10 for comfort and performance. Last to be scored always at Run For Adventure is durability. And this is one of the areas where I felt there could be improvements made on the Convara 11. So I'd been running the Convara 11 for about 30 miles and all of a sudden some of the overlays started to peel off and it was only on the right shoe. So you can see on that upper, where I've sort of had to cut away the overlays because they were sort of flapping around in the wind and driving me crazy. It didn't really affect the performance, but it just didn't look very good on the running shoe. So I'm happy to say none of them above issues when it comes to the new Kinvara 12. The upper's showing no early signs of wear at all. There's definitely no overlays peeling off. Knowing how um, hard wearing this exposed outsole is, again, showing no signs of early wear and it held up really well on the Convara 11. So I think this is gonna be a pretty durable shoe. First impressions look really good. So we're gonna score the Convara 11 with a solid eight out of 10 when it comes to durability. So if we tally all those scores up, this lightweight, neutral, responsive training shoe from Saucony is gonna come in with a very good 23 out of 30. As far as looks for the shoe, well, I think this future black colorway that Saucony are using on their running shoe range is a great color combination. And I personally think it suits the Convara 12 the best out of all the other models of shoe. This is a funky looking running shoe. It's bold, it's colorful, it's bright. It's just how I want my running shoes to look. So the Convara 12 is gonna get a massive thumbs up when it comes down to looks. As far as comparisons to the Convara 12, there is a few, um, I would say Hoka Rincon 2, very similar in construction to this shoe. So weight similar, it's nice lightweight, neutral training shoe that will cross over to all aspects of your running. Obviously the Rincon is a bit deeper in midsole so if you're the type of runner who likes a deep cushioned midsole the Rincon 2 would definitely be an option. Also from New Balance you have the Fuel Cell 890 V8 another shoe we've reviewed on the channel check out the review if you haven't seen it already but that shoe again very versatile in its running and it feels very similar underfoot compared to the midsole on the Kimbara. And last up the Brooks Hyperion Tempo again another great versatile line light shoe that will handle all aspects of your running all the way through to a race day shoe as well. So that's it guys. That is another review done at Run For Adventure. So I think it's about time we wrap this up with a quick conclusion. So if you're the type of runner like me that the first thing you look for when purchasing a pair of running shoes is the weight and you like to keep that weight down as low as you can even in your training shoes, but you want a degree of comfort and plushness from the upper and you want a comfortable soft midsole that's going to handle longer runs, recovery runs and just cross over to most aspects of your running, then I definitely recommend looking out the Convara 12. But also if you are a bit more of a traditionalist when it comes to your running shoes and you like that sort of old school feel and you're a bit fed up of all them deep oversized cushion midsoles that we're seeing on a lot of running shoes nowadays, then I definitely recommend checking out the Convara 12. But that's it guys, that is a wrap on another review at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but hit that bell icon so you'll get notified when we upload any new content. I've left a link in the description for the Kinvara 12. If you wanna find out any more information about this specific shoe or about Saucony as a running brand, please click that link and do so. But get involved guys as well. Did you run in the Kinvara 11? Have you got the Kinvara 12? Which shoe do you prefer? Let us know in the comments below. But also guys, don't forget to go along to Run For Adventure and check out all the new merchandise for the channel. We've got the awesome Believe in Achieve 
complete range of hoodies and tees. We've also got the original Run for Adventure hoodies and tees available and three new super cool multi-wrap designs available for you guys at home as well. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. We've got lots of reviews coming your way very soon. But as always, stay safe and keep on running.